Hey guys, welcome to our interactive English series. By interactive English, I mean that we're in the kitchen today and we're gonna go through different objects like space rack, oven, etc. I'm gonna point at those objects and explain what they do and what's the exact word that you use to describe them in English. So if you're interested and you like visual stuff, first of all, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and let's start learning English. So kitchen is a place where you prepare food. In some American homes, you also have a dining room, which is separate. So you will prepare your food here. We are in our house. I'm going to show you. We actually have this dining room, but I was like, why have a separate dining room when we can have kids room here? So this is actually the previous tenant who lived here. We looked at the photos. He actually had a huge dining table here. And I guess that makes sense if you have a lot of parties at home, if you like to invite guests. But for us, we decided that we're gonna have this dining area as a part of our kitchen. And this is enough for us right now. All right, let's start with this corner. This is our dish washer. We'll put our dishes here. By the way, if you wonder what this is called, this is your rack in the dishwasher. So something to put your cups, utensils on. We have dishwasher detergent and it's right here. It can be liquid, but it can also be in packs. So we have these packs and you put them in your dishwasher and it helps your dishes stay clean. This is called rinse aid. And this is something you can have learned when I came to the US because um, in our previous apartment, our dishwasher said low rinse aid, refill rin rinse aid. And I was like, why do you need something extra? So this just basically helps your dishes dry better and they're sparkling, they're clean. Yeah, it kind of helps, but I also think people just invent a lot more stuff to get your money. I don't know, but we still use it. Rinse aid. This is our sink, so if you wash, your dishes manually you use it you use dish soap to clean your dishes and you also have this tap in great britain it's called faucet the thing is whenever you travel in every country you will have different perks that taps have so you kind of have to figure out how they work the first time i entered this house i switch on water and there is no water and I tell the agent, the agent was here, and I was like, ah, we have no water, and we're moving in today, I need water, we just flew here from Russia. And she said, try this. Like, seriously? And every single person who comes to this house, they tell me, Marina, you don't have water in the kitchen. We do have it. There's just this sensor right here to make the process more automatic. But I don't know. I don't really like it. Do you? If you're watching from Turkey, you probably know what this is. Uh, I think this is a Turkish thing. I've just seen a lot of those in Turkey. This is a juicer and I've seen them in Italy as well. We used to use them for oranges, but now we got another juicer. It's right here. We use it for oranges. Something else that we have here, super important. This is called a chopping board. And you normally have several. You have a separate chopping board for your meat. You have a chopping board for bread. Like for example, this is our bread chopping board. It's um, wooden. This is paper towel, super useful. You can use it instead of napkins or, you know, something that is a must have in any kitchen. This is a thing that completely changed my life. Cost $10. This is an egg cooker. So instead of cooking your eggs and boiling them using the traditional method, a saucepan, etc., you just put them here you add some water and um, it starts and then it stops automatically makes the sound since we got it we just used this we we stopped doing eggs the regular way we have our kettle here but the thing is another life hack we got a water dispenser so here in the us we pay around six dollars to rent it every month but this water dispenser actually dispenses hot water, which means we stopped using the kettle. We only use it when we need a large amount of water for like boiling tea for many people. But if I want to make myself a cup of tea, I will just use this water dispenser and uh, you can use it for both cold water and hot water. Here we have our fridge, messy. Welcome to our fridge. I'm not gonna point at food this time, but if you want me to point at food, we can make a separate video. We have the fridge and we have a freezer. So everything here is frozen. One of the best ice creams here in the US. Chocolate. If you have food that doesn't require refrigeration, 
Then you store this food in the cupboard. And uh, well, I did some reorganizing a couple weeks ago, but you can't really tell. We've lived in this house for eight months. Oh my God, where is this coming from? So much food. We have our pasta here, we have coffee, we have dates my favorite dessert replacement. Oh, and if you wonder what this is, somebody told me this helps to prevent ants, but they came here yesterday and they didn't care about my orange peels. So here we have another juicer. This is actually a fancy juicer that lets you juice anything from grapes to... We stopped using it. The problem is I only want to juice oranges and this is not good for oranges. It's a toaster coffee maker or coffee machine Nespresso is my favorite. Here we have a blender, but if you come to the States, some people can actually say Vitamix. And this is something that I like to explore in a language where a brand becomes a name for an object. Like, I don't know if you knew that, but for example, Jacuzzi is actually a brand. In America, we call this thing a hot tub, but because there were Jacuzzi, Yakuzzi brothers from Italy who started this company producing jacuzzis, people started calling them jacuzzis. Same with uh, blenders. There is a company called Vitamix and they started doing blenders, but now people just say Vitamix. Vitamix costs around $600. This was like $39.99 in Costco. This is my buffle maker, but again, so bad. I've only used it like a couple times and then I decided that I need less gluten in my life. So this whole thing is called a stove. It can be electric and gas. A lot of states in the US, a lot of cities are actually banning gas stoves. Uh, so we already have electric and this thing here is called an oven. So for example, if you're baking something, be careful when taking your tray out of the oven because it can be too hot. This is a kitchen towel, super useful for every purpose. This is your frying pan. This is a larger one, so we do vegetables here, but we also have a lot of different pans right here. We have like a smaller one as well. This thing here can also be called a saucepan and this can also be called a pot. This is a gift I got from my friend who lived here in Silicon Valley. She attended Stanford and now she's gone and she lives in Paris. But before she moved, to, she gave me a lot of stuff from my kitchen. And this is my spice rack that was gifted by that friend. And we have several spices here. In a typical American home, you would also have some space for supplements. Americans love supplements. And this is what I also realized when I first came here. In every single home where I came, there was a special rack with a lot of supplements. And I was like, wow, that is exciting. Like people care about themselves. People care about uh, taking vitamins. And uh, I've started doing the same and I feel better. Let's go through some smaller things that are also useful. This is a grater. You grate your cheese with it. This is a measuring cup. And if you look at American recipes, and this is by the way, another great way to learn English. Uh, I remember when I was back in Russia, I would only look at American recipes because I wanted to get acquainted with the culture and um, the food that people eat, but also because I wanted to learn uh, vocabulary connected with cooking. In a lot of American recipes, people measure stuff with cups, like two cups of flour, one cup of milk, and uh, this really helps measure everything. This thing is called a whisk, and you use it to whisk your eggs, flour, whatever. Whenever you're baking, you would use a whisk. Another type of measuring cups, one fourth of a cup, one third of a cup, one half of a cup, whole cup. Very useful. This is spatula. So whenever you're frying eggs or making pancakes, you use it to take them from your frying pan and onto the plate. Spatula. This is a game changer. This is called peeler and you use it to peel your potatoes, cucumbers. Uh, when I used to peel potatoes and cucumbers with a regular knife, this is a knife, I would peel half of the potato instead of just peeling its skin. But when I started using this and this cost like a dollar from Ikea, game changer, I became like a professional chef peeling vegetables. When I say colander, do you understand what this means? Let's find a colander in my kitchen. Is it gonna be here? Oh yeah, this is your colander. When you make your pasta, you put it here to drain. So the water comes from your pasta and you enjoy it 
without any water and colander helps you with it. Now guess what's this called? And again, depending on where you're from, when I first saw it, I was like, what do you use it for? This is called tongs. When you're making salad, when you have a lot of lettuce in your salad, I'm gonna show you what lettuce is. Lettuce, where are you? Oh, this lettuce. You can tell that it's my favorite because we don't have a lot of it left. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> something is living on it already. So this is lettuce. So when you're making salad with lettuce, you would use your tongs to pick it from the plate and put it on your plate or from a bowl, whatever you use to make a salad. Tongs. Ladle. You absolutely need it if you like to cook soups. We have this small ladle that came with this instant pot. And instant pot is another word that I want you to know. Instant pot is used to create anything basically, but we use it for soups, we use it for poultry. Poultry is chicken, duck, etc. We use it for oatmeal. So instant pot, in order to take things out of instant pot, they gave us this. This is a plastic ladle. And we also have a metal ladle. It's a big ladle. When we cook soups, we would take the soup with this ladle. Rolling pin. You use it to flatten your pastry whenever you're baking something. Rolling pin. This is called corkscrew for you to open your wine bottle. Corkscrew. Very basic, but just to remind you, this is a spoon, this is a fork, this is a knife, and we also have these amazing chopsticks. My friend brought them from Japan and they're a piece of art. This is a chopstick. Okay guys, I think this was really comprehensive, but I also realized there are a lot of other words that we haven't covered in this video, like kitchen shears. Like, these aren't actually scissors, these are kitchen shears. They help you cut through meat and bones. They have this special section, I guess that's for crab. Just because kitchen comprises so many objects, there are a lot more words to learn. And uh, I think if this video passes 500,000 views, we're gonna make part two of the kitchen vocabulary. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. To help me uh, reach this mini goal of 500,000 views, share this video with your friends who are learning English. And thank you so, so much for watching up to the very end. I hope you hit the like button and I hope you hit the subscribe button and I'll see you very soon in my next videos. Bye bye.